again number 10 of these lessons turning to the man called Santa Claus we in 30 pages 29 pages to the 30th page have remarkably seen a religion advertising anti-christ anti-god changing of the Bible anti-spirit we have seen this person to be a counter opposite of Jesus Christ 1930s coca-cola advertising Hayden h-a-d-d-o-n Sunbloom s-u-n-b-l-o-m Sunbloom's cause firmly established a larger than life grandfatherly cause as a key figure in American Christmas imagery I-m-a-g-e <coughs> <clears throat> so popular were Sunburn's image of Santa Claus. Sunburn's images are used by Coca-Cola to this day. And even 2015, last year, when you went into the supermarket to find Coca-Cola, you found his image of Santa Claus on the cans and bottles. That Sam Boone's of credit has create credited as having credit the modern image of Santa Claus so this guy he brings us to modern Santa Claus his last work was for a 1972 cover of Playboy magazine when he illustrated a half-dressed woman in a Santa Claus outfit mocking his own coca-cola ads that's a remarkable uh, when you download if you get this and download it on my website I've got the cover photo of the Playboy, and I had to put a little rectangular box there. You don't want to see, as a Christian, what's behind that box. But I guess Santa sees everything will be seen. Coke's operation was an immediate hit and repeated each and every season. In the beginning, artist Hayden Sunboom painted the image of Santa using a live model. His friend, Lou Prentice, P R E N T I S S, a retired salesman. When Prentice passed away, Sunbloom began using himself as a model, painting while looking in a, into a mirror, a reverse image. After the 1930s, he used phot photographs to create the image of Saint Nick. Another year, evidently, Santa's large black belt was backwards in the drawing. Probably because artist Hayden Simmons had used himself as a model and the belt buckle appeared in reverse as he drew himself in the mirror. Some little interesting facts. Get to the Bible, Romans 1.23. <coughs> Excuse me for coughing, I'm sorry, allergies. And changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like a corruptible man and to birds and four-footed beasts, now comet, now cupid, and creepy things. Exodus 23 24. Thou shalt not bow down their, to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their images. Leviticus 26 1. Ye shall make no idols nor graven image, neither rear you up a standing image, neither shall ye set an image or of stone in your land to bow down unto it, for I am the Lord your God. Numbers 33:52. Then you shall drive out all the inhabitants of the land from before you, and destroy all their <coughs> again, excuse me, pictures, and destroy all their molten images, and quite pluck down all their high places, high places, north pole, rooftop, chimneys, sleigh riding through this. Why did Christians fall for this nonsense? Since it violates the Holy Bible. According to the Coca-Cola Company, for inspiration, Sunbloom turned. To Clement Clark Moore's 1822 poem, A Visit from Santa Claus, commonly called Twas the Night Before Christmas, and we've already looked at that study in previous. As we've already had studied early with the man, Mr. Nicholas, or Santa, there seems to be a recurring events places over and over and over and over. It's not different themes, it's the same thing evoluting if I can use that word into what we have in Santa Claus today it's religion it's science it's advertising it's money it's Satan 
Catholic, New York, Protestants, gods, etc. is surrounded by this Santa Claus. Death. Holidays. Why does and has religion, false religion, keep showing up when it's Santa Claus? Roman Catholics, Baptists, Martin Luther, and others are in the train of, of Santa being the locomotive and the boxcars being Catholics, Baptists, Martin Luther. And we'll see science, we'll see our space industry into this. The newspapers, the media. It was the night before Christmas by Moore. He was he was of a church. Moore's description of Saint Lit Nick led to an image of Santa that was warm, friendly, pleasantly plump, and human. For the next thirty-three years. Now, if that's not an imitation of Jesus Christ, you don't know your Bible. Sunburn painted portraits of Santa that helped to create the modern image of Santa. An interpretation that today lives, in, uh, lives on and in the minds of people of all ages, all over the world. Mark 16, 15, he said unto them, Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. This person is going all the world. He travels the whole world in one night, bringing a false gift that's not of God. Sunbloom is accepted as a major effect on many well-known pinups artists, such as Gil Evgren, Edward Ronchi, Wonky, R U N C I, Joyce Ball and Tally, I don't know, B A L L A N T Y N E, Art From, F R A H M, and Henry Ekman, E K M A N. So Santa falls in with pop, excuse me, pin up, pin up artists. The same creator. In the mid 1930s, he began to paint pin ups and glamour pieces for calendars. Sunburn's last assignment in 1972 was a cover painting for Playboy's Christmas issue. What a, what a last portrait for this man who, who gave us the imagery of Santa. A woman with her breasts exposed in a Santa outfit. 1930s, uh, 1972, remind you. The late 20th century saw a major shift in the nativity scene. Now we're going back to the Bible. The figures of kneeling Santa, a statue of figurine, Mary and Joseph, the wise men, the angels, the shepherds, and their flocks disappeared. Well, they don't know their Bible because they, the shepherds and the wise men didn't come at the same time. In their place, they removed Mary, they removed Joseph. In their place, kneeling before the manger is Santa Claus, dressed in red. Ooh. We see Jesus in red in the Bible. Isaiah 63, 1 and 2. Who is this that comes from Edom and dyed garments from Basra? This is a glorious in his apparel, travailing in the greatness of his strength. I that speak in righteousness, might, mighty to save. I got to turn my line too. Wherefore art thou red in thy apparel and thy garments, like him that treadeth in the wine fat? Revelation 19, 13. He was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood. Forgive me. I got a tickle in my throat right now. <coughs> and his name is called the Word of God. And. All right. He was dressed in red. At baby's Jesus. In the manger. And white Coca-Cola uniform with a black belt. He dresses up in a uniform of a product that never was when Jesus was born. And this image of Santa was the 1930s yet, but he can show up when Jesus was born. Around 0 AD. 
This, the Santa we read, that Jesus helped with injured. Well, this was. I'm just give me. I'm sorry, for This, the same Santa we read, that Jesus helped when injured and was brought to Bethlehem to see the original nativity scene. So Santa was brought back in a time machine by Jesus to show him when Jesus was born. Because Jesus helped an injured Santa deliver presents all one night. So Jesus did a Hollywood trick and brought him back in a time machine. He didn't bring him to Calvary in the empty tomb. He brought Santa to the manger. That's not our salvation. The empty tomb is our salvation. The manger was the only the beginning. The empty tomb and seated at the right hand of the Father is the ending of my salvation, which goes for all eternity. And now he is represented by Coca-Cola, which one had cocaine as an ingredient in their soda. <laughs> a white powder 1915 white rock beverage image of Santa in advertising mineral water 1923 ginger ale 1937 Charles W. Howard plays Santa in stores parades established Charles W. Howard Santa School the Charles W. Howard Santa School is a non-profit organization established in 1937 it is the longest continuously running Santa Claus school in the world. <coughs> Thomas Vallet, <coughs> V-A-L-E-N-T, is the present dean of the internationally recognized Santa school. There's a Santa school. The mission of the school is to uphold the traditions and preserve the history of Santa Claus. Lies, fairies, devils, beating, bad children, mischief. Go back to the 30 other pages that we study to provide our students with necessary resources that allow them to further define and improve their individual presentations of Santa Claus. HTP colon slash slash www.santaclausschool.com slash index dot html. International School of Santa Claus master's degree there are five categories of this diploma I'm gonna tell you what they are some of them associate of Santa Claus ideology Santa Claus ideology I can call myself a doctor of, of uh, philosophy and I didn't take Santa Claus ideology I took Christ ideology Ology. Theology. Here's a doctrine. Here's an associate in the study of a man and Satan. The, this, this, uh, this diploma is in, included in our DVD correspondence course. Bachelor of Santa Claus Ology. Any individual who re registers and attends his first Santa for Santa. Excuse me. Schools for Santa's will receive upon completion this diploma, Master of Santa Claus Ology. Any individual who re registers and attends a second school, school for Santa will receive upon completion this diploma, Advanced Master of Santa, Santa Claus Ology. An individual who registers and attends a third, fourth, etc. school for Santa will be receive upon completion this diploma, Doctor of Santa Claus Claus Ideology, PhD, through special arrangements and advanced coordination, this diploma is presented to those in individual who is additionally uh, to additional to acting. Uh, I'm sorry, people. I'm just having who is additional to attending previous school for Santas and receiving their bachelor and master's diplomas. Having registered for an additional school and arranged to make their desertion at once at one of the school for Santa's, a Santa, Mrs. Claus, or couple who feel they have special knowledge in one or more areas of Santa education may apply to the school, and if their subject is accepted, they will make a 20 to 30 minute desertion at 
a school www.realsanders.com slash iusc dot so you can hang a diploma on a wall that you're Santa Claus though there is no Santa Claus never has been there never will be but you can get a doctor a PhD in this mess chimney a Norse tradition Auden would often enter through chimneys or fire holes breaking an entry my friend B and E John 20 verse 19 then the same day at evening being the first day of the week when the doors were shut where the disciples were assembled for the fear of the Jews came Jesus and stood in the midst saith unto them peace be unto you so Santa and Auden like Jesus Christ can enter a room without without the need of opening the door matter of fact Jesus said I am the door never mind opening it it's me how's that even if the door is locked the three can enter Santa or Father Christmas or Mr. Nicholas has become a copy of the true Bible Jesus North Pole Jesus lives in the north. Psalms 48, 1 through 2. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness. Beautiful for situation. The joy of the whole world, earth, is Mount Zion on the sides of the north, the city of the great king. Psalm 75, 6 and 7. Promotion cometh neither out of the east, nor the west, nor the south, but God. East, West, South, God is the judge. He putteth down one and set up another. North American tradition, December 23rd, 08. Canada granted citizenship to Santa. <coughs> Santa is now... <coughs> A legal resident of the country called Canada it seems again America has replaced God with Santa Claus Isaiah 40 22 it is he that sits upon the circle of the earth and the inhabitants thereof are as grasshoppers they stretch out the heavens as a curtain and spread them out as a tent to dwell in circle of the earth is north Psalm 75 6 to 7 promotion comes out neither the east nor the west, nor the south, but God is the judge. God is the north. Cadenin Post. Post to co. Ho, ho, ho. H O H O H O. H is reserved for the island of Montreal, Quebec. Zechariah 2 6. Ho, ho, come forth. Flee from the land of the north, saith the Lord. For I have spread you abroad as the four winds of the heaven, saith the Lord. Even the Canaan government will lie to change their postal service system for a liar who is no one. There is no one. And lives nowhere in the North Pole. Montreal, Canada. Montreal, Quebec. Will you please stop? You're spinning my head. You're giving me a headache. You're making me drowsy. I got enough problem coming off of this cold from last week and having allergies today, but this stuff is making me really nausea. Listen, we're not talking about children believing this, man. We're talking about adults, governments, churches. There are live, mature people that believe and act as if Santa was a real person. And Canada has changed their zip code system to accommodate a Roman Catholic church. You do know Canada is Roman Catholic. And a satanic person that is not real. The study of Santa Claus is serious and real. A real Antichrist. We Christians need to know what's behind these lies and how far they stretch. I was surprised to find out that our neighbors to the north has a zip code for Santa Claus. And he is a resident of their country. 
like to see his driver's license as an ID. The government of the United States, through the postal service system, NORAD and mother and father allow such nonsense to happen. That without the postal service or volunteer agencies, the children would learn there is no Santa by no return letter. All the newspapers, the postal service, grandma, grandpa, every child is sure to receive a reply from this non-man. I wonder how many are born again Christians. And I just said there is, these people will make sure that your child writes to Santa. And being no Santa, somebody will write to that child proclaiming to be Santa. That's a lie. That's a forged document. And if I were to send such a letter through the U.S. Postal Service, the government would arrest me for impersonating, for forgery, and probably other countless things that are illegal with long numbers. And yet our own Postal Service will do it for kitties and whoever writes Santa. Philippians 4, 6, be careful for nothing. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. Mark 5.23 And besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lies at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. Speak unto Jesus. Matthew 7.7 7, Ask, and shall be given you. Seek, and shall be found. Knock, and shall be opened unto you. Parents, postal service, government, Discredit Jesus Christ and God by allowing the children to have Santa Claus rather than Jesus Christ. Do you know who answers prayers of these children? It's not Santa. There is no Santa to answer their prayers. It may be a federal postal employee or maybe a paid service that your father or mother paid. Who knows, maybe it could be a child molester in prison returning a warm welcoming correspondence to your child. I'm saying, you know, that letter coming back from Santa to your child could be a child molester in, in jail. I don't know. Then in the end, who gets the credit? The gift tag says to, the, to your child's name, from who? Santa. Says the gift tag, am I wrong? Or am I right? Do those gift tags say Santa brought that gift? First Thessalonians 5 17. Pray without ceasing. Jesus said, John 14, 13, whatsoever ye ask, whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And the children ask in the name of Santa Claus. Who is also called Father Christmas. So Santa has stolen the requests by children, children of God, which is supposed to go to the Father in the name of Jesus, but it's in the name of Santa Claus. This is outright robbery. You are stealing from God if you are a born again Bible believing Christian and involved in this mess. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not take the Lord, take the name of the Lord, thy God's name in vain. Calling God Father Christmas. That's vain. Because there is no Father Christmas. Vain means empty, nothing. Yet there are Christian parents that allow their children to do just that. Casting all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. The children don't know it's supposed to be Jesus. This makes God jealous. Having a relationship with your entire family with a God, Santa Claus. Exodus 20, verse 5. Thou shalt not bow thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. <coughs> Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of all them that hate me. Now, he's not passing the sin of the father unto the sons and unto the grandchildren. Is the fathers are teaching the sons Santa Claus, the sons are teaching the grandchildren Santa Claus, the grandchildren are teaching the great grandchildren Santa Claus, 
all the way to the 2016, Santa Claus has been taught and has been living through family generations. Where was that? Some children sit on Santa's knees. All presents getting all the presents getting are being bowed down before the tree. You bow down on your knees and get those presents underneath that tree. Exodus 34, 14, For thou shalt worship no other god. For the Lord, who is jealous, is a jealous god. Santa is a god, a god of children, desires and wants, coveting, teaching children how to covet. And not going to God, but going to Santa for it. Because if you go to God, God will say, Thou shalt not covet. That's a sin. And we don't want to hurt our children's feelings, do we? Deuteronomy 5, 9. Thou shalt not bow thyself unto them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God. Visit the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. Christian parents, you will suffer loss of rewards at the judgment seat of Christ. I guarantee that. God is jealous. United States Postal Service oldest Santa, oldest Santa lettering answered effort. 1912 James Farley Post Office began in, you want to guess? New York. James Farley was one of the first Irish, you want to guess? Catholic politicians in America. Politician now. We are now in the realm of politics. You're not supposed to speak about politics and religion. Yet, here's science. Here's politics. Here's religion. Here's Santa Claus. He was responsible for putting together the New Deal Alliance for Catholics, labor unions, African Americans, and farmers for FDR. Farley and the organization's backing machine was which he presided over helped to fuel the social and structure programs of the New Deal. Farley helped to stabilize dip diplomatic relations with the Holy See. I'm reading that, I'm not calling it that, but that's the documented evidence in 1933. This guy who would have you, the, our postal service right to children for Santa is involved with Catholics and brought this country closer to the Roman Catholic Church in 1933. He was the first eminent, E-M-I-N-E-N-T, government sanctioned to travel to Rome. Woo-wee! I wonder if he did it on a sleigh. Going to the home place of the Santa Claus, Satan. Not the North Pole, the Rome. Where he had an audience with Pope Pius the Sixth and dinner with Cardinal Pacella, P A C E L L I, which would be the future Pope Pius the Twelfth. This guy's got Catholic connections. So we are now in religion again, we are now in politics. And we are now in Rome. Farley steered and stayed at the wheels of Coca-Cola International. There's Coca-Cola. For over 30 years and was in control of the company's global, global, worldwide, Santa, worldwide. Grow. I like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. Remember that Coke commercial in the 70s? Let's get everybody together. What's the world, the one world government? Who's that going to be under? Santa Claus, Satan, Coca-Cola, Roman Catholic Church, religion, politics. Boy, we've got it nailed. This was used as a lift to morale and energy levels of our fighting boys. Wait a minute, hold on. I didn't finish. International for over 30 years and was in control of the company's global go growth as a quasi-government agency in the World War II. This was used as a lift to, mor to the morale and energy levels of our fighting boys. Shipped with food and ammo as a war priority item 
the deal spread Coke's market worldwide at a government cost. So Coca-Cola, through this guy, became a worldwide, through World War II, through the FDR, for the boys. Also as U.S. payment after the war, 59 new coal plants were installed to help reconstruct Europe. And you thought Clinton moved our jobs out of America and overseas. Now, this was going on in the 1930s. This was going on in World War II, after World War II. Coca-Cola went into Europe. The landmark James Farley Post Office in, you want to guess, New York City, is selected in his honor and as a commemorative to his career in public services. Farley worked hard to preserve the post office going through the Depression and through his professional stewardship, stewardship, that ought to be Christians. This guy's more faithful to the postal service, to his church, to Santa, than Christians are to God, the Bible, and Jesus Christ. The once losing postal office department finally became a turning a profit. And postal office is losing again. Built in 1912, the building is famous for being, excuse me, built in 1912, the building is famous for bearing this inscription. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night stays these couriers from their swift completion of their appointed rounds. Santa will also deliver in all kind of weather, won't he? Santa must be a god and a U.S. postal employee, according to that inscription. Whether the rain is on Christmas Eve, whether the weather is on Christmas Eve, how dark it is on Christmas Eve, Santa will make his rounds and will make his delivery. 1982, the post office was officially labeled, labeled the James A. Farley Building and as a shrine and testament Look at that. Santa Claus has his own testament. To the political career of the nation's 53rd Postmaster General. The Farley Post Office is home to Operation Santa. Made from the famous in the classic 1947 film, Miracle on 34th Street, New York. City. I'm not making this stuff up. I wish I was. I wish this was a fairy tale by Stanley Avery, but it's not. Operation Santa Claus is a yearly enterprise that carries out by the U.S. by the United States Postal Service. Your tax dollars are paying. It was started in 1912 in the United States Postmaster General Frank Hitchcock authorized local past postmasters and who paid these men to start responding to needy children with the first one starting at the James Farley Post Office. So mailmen were paid by tax dollars to write for Santa. My question is, why doesn't Santa answer his own mail? For those seeking the Santa Claus holiday postmark through the United States Postal Service, they should send their letter from Santa or a holiday greeting card by December 10th. Should, should have stayed. They, oh yeah, they should have stayed with the history of December seventh. That's the holiday in order for um, what was his name? Saint Nicholas, Mister Nicholas. So, if you want a postmark of Santa Claus, you send it by this date to Santa Claus, P.O. Box two hundred two, Santa Claus, Indiana. 
Four seven five seven nine. Don't you dare send it to them with by my. Thing. I am not. I'm just telling you the address. There is an address that you can send to a man who's not a man. I thought he lived in Canada. I thought he lived in the North Pole, but evidently he's now in Indiana. I guess he, when he's going through all the world, he stops at the post office, picks up his mail, and can't answer it. So the U.S. Postal Service spends money, a now broke business, to affix a service to someone who is not real and is of Satan. Or for the North Pole Holiday Postmark, Postmaster 4141 Postmark Drive, Anchorage, Alaska. In 2006, France, France, country France, Postal Service recorded the most letters to Santa. Thousand, hundred thousand, one million two hundred twenty-two thousand, a hundred and twenty-six countries. In Britain, letters are burned in the fireplace, magically transformed to Santa. Doesn't that sound like what the priest does with the host at the mass? Mexico and Latin America, they use helium balloons to reach Santa with his letters. Now, I'm going to stop here. Because we're going to get into our space and defense system next. Okay. But we're going to stop right there. This man is wicked. And he's not even a man. And he comes in his own name. He has gifts. He's got to be a spirit because no one can see him. And he can travel the whole world in one night. And he can tell the difference between good, good girls and bad boys. He's got the United States Postal Service writing his correspondence at your cost. He's a Catholic. And yet he's Protestant. And yet... What was that other church? I forget the name. Let me check here real quick. I want to get this right. Oh. I forget the name. Episcopal. And yet, he's also a spokesman for Coca Cola. He's been in the war with our troops. He Coca-Cola is all over the world. He's been drawn pictures of. And his pictures are more widely known than Jesus Christ. No, we do not have no pictures of Jesus Christ. He's loved everywhere. And if you preach and kick him, people get upset. They get angry. These videos, ten of them now, are not for the lost people. Though they can use them and they'll get the truth. These are for born again Bible believing Christian families. That are involved in this mess. And I hope by this 10th video. That you will be out of it. And I hope you're not hating me. And calling me the liar. And prejudiced. And perverted. And whatever other words you can call it. Go for it. But what I've been reading to you. Is documented proof. This person this spirit has no business to be in a Christian home 